contains a hundred billion cells, neurons, and they make a hundred trillion connections or synapses. And each of the neurons release chemical substances called neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters are the legal tender of the brain. That's how these cells communicate with each other. As the neurotransmitters flow through the brain like a river, sending a steady stream of information between the brain's emotional and thinking regions. Just a few milligrams of an antidepressant like Prozac, Zoloft or Paxil can quickly and radically affect one of them. The mood influencing chemical serotonin. In the synaptic gap between the neurons, where serotonin delivers messages from one cell to another, sit a series of molecules that work like locks on a canal, regulating the flow of serotonin, determining its rise and fall. In the depressed brain, serotonin is often at low ebb. An antidepressant can plug the entry to some of the molecular locks, forcing serotonin levels to rise in the open spaces between the cells, a change that occurs throughout the brain, but especially in the brain's prefrontal cortex. And the fact that it occurs in the prefrontal cortex, I think, is very intriguing, since this is the very area that people would have um, guessed would be a critical area in being able to regulate your mood for the brain to be able to get itself back on track. Higher levels of serotonin stimulate a cascade of reactions that bring the brain back into balance. Within weeks, the symptoms of depression mysteriously lift. What we really want to understand is that last step, that last bit, that change in the wiring so that the I'm no good changes to maybe things are not so bad. And that is going to take an enormous amount of progress in neuroscience. But when we understand that, we're going to understand very, very important things about what it means to be human, how things go wrong, and how things can go right.